So WebGL is made up of some fundamental pieces that most frameworks don't necessarily show you. Um, they kind of build on top of them, but you don't necessarily get exposed to them. So in this video, I'm going to go through some of those. Um, and I'm going to talk about attributes, shaders, uniforms, and varying values. Um, and with this example, it's going to be pretty basic. Uh, you see I have a plane that is rend rendering on the screen and moving around in a circle. And to start with, I must talk about attributes. So attributes are the data <clears throat> that your program is drawing. And what we're going to do is we're going to generate a plane. Um, and it's going to be 100 segments by 100 segments. And I'm going to create um, some positions from that. And I've collapsed down my code here. And I'm using a framework called Regal, which abstracts away some of the WebGL state management. So we're only concentrating on the concepts, not on how you actually manipulate the WebGL state. Um, so let's open up Generate Plane, which takes segments X and segments Z. So X is the axis this way, and Z is the kind of depth axis. So we're not moving anything in the Y axis. So Generate Plane, we're going to have a, an array of positions and our width is going to be basically one on each side. Um, so I just take the value one and divide by how many segments I want to make. Um, and then I have two for loops, one for x and one for z, and the loop is basically x is less than how many segments I want to do and z is less than how many segments I want to do there. And then I have some math to generate the x and z values. And you see with my comment, I'm going to build two triangles. Basically, I'm going to push on here my triangle A is x0, z0 to x0, z1, and then x1 to z1. That's my triangle A. And I'm going to push those in. And if you see, I just have a list of triangles, a list of uh, positions rather. And the y is going to be 0 on all of those. Um, and then for my triangle B, we'll do the same thing, but with this triangle starting from here, these three points. And I'm going to push those on. And at the end, I'm going to get a list of values from it. Um, and in WebGL, they need to be packed into a buffer, and I'm not going to show how to do that. Um, my framework handles that for me. Um, but these are going to be my attributes that I actually draw. Uh, and I have them here, so positions. And in Regal, what I can do is I can just define these attributes and then pass them in, and it just kind of magically handles the state management for me, which is nice, so I don't have to mess with it. Um, and that's the actual data I'm going to do. And you can have more types of attributes. You can have normals, you can add like a color per vertex, and various things like this. Um, right now, I'm just throwing in the raw triangle information. I'm not, you can actually do index-based um, draw calls, but I'm not going to go into that now. Um, so attributes are the first step of getting in there. The next step is creating a shader. So a shader is made up of two things. The first one is a vertex shader. And if you see here, um, I'm doing a little bit of magic, but this text, and it's just text, um, is the vertex shader. And it is a C-like program that is uploaded to the GPU. And um, it moves the, the vertices. So all those positions I just created, um, it moves those for me. And you can see here, now I have attribute uh, vec3, which is a um, three-dimensional vector, and the position. I take that in. And the second part of the shader is a fragment. And this colors a pixel fragment, so just a single pixel. So first, move the position, move the, move the vertices around the screen, and then draw the actual pixel from there. And those are kind of the basics of shaders. Um, and shaders operate in parallel. So they run the same program at the same time over different parts of the data. So they can't talk to each other as they're running. They just run off one off the other. So it runs off like vertex, 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 or pixel, 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 pixel. Uh, but if we run it multiple times, um, we can have these things called uniforms. So I can actually call draw shader multiple times. So I can actually move this plane and draw it multiple times on the screen. Um, but I can change the uniform values. So uniform values are uniform across every pixel, across every um, vertex. So you see my uniforms that I have defined here in my vertex shader 
are uh, my view and projection. So view is my matrix that represents where my camera is. And then projection is my matrix that, that basically makes it look like it's in three, it warps it to make it look like it um, zooms into the, in the distance and disappears on the horizon. Um, and I'm not gonna go into how I've created these, but you can see I've defined um, view and projection. I also have this other one called time that I've thrown in there. And I'm using some matrix math, which is beyond the scope of this talk um, on how I do that. But I do pass in the current time in seconds in there, which I can start to play with. So let's go ahead and do that. So here's my position. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ahead and create a position two. Um, and I'm gonna set it to the current position. So if I go here and set that to position two and save, um, you can see it's gonna do the exact same thing. Um, so position two, let's say the Y here, I'm going to set it to um, 0 0.1. Let's do a little bit more, 0 0.5. You can see I've moved that up in, in space. Now, I haven't defined time here, so I'm gonna go ahead and say I have my uniform float value for time, which is the current time in seconds, and I'm gonna set my Y value to time. And what happens is now, you can see it zooms off the screen. Okay, well, that's not as helpful. So let's do the sine function, which just is up and down. And you can see now I'm, I've made it so that my, uh, my plane is actually moving in, in space, which is kind of fun. But maybe let's do that, uh, let's, let's, let's change it up and add in my position x. So basically for each position, it's, the time's gonna be slightly off. When I save that, <laughs> you can see now it's kind of waving as it's going through. Um, let's make that a little bit more dramatic by multiplying the position. So we'll squish the position in so the wave happens a lot quicker on there. So let's do like five instead of two. <laughs> so now you can see it's moving kind of crazy like that. And, but maybe that's moving too high, so let's save. Let's multiply the entire position y by 0 0.1 to make it less so. Okay, there we go. And it's not moving quite fast enough yet, so let's speed up the time. So I just multiply time by some value. So we'll do 3.0 times time. And this is written all in GLSL, which is C-like, it's not JavaScript, but I do have it embedded in JavaScript just to make things nice and confusing. Okay, well that's fun. Let's take the cosine now of the position Y with those same values and see what happens. So I'm adding, let's do plus equals on both of these. Uh, position Z, sorry, we want depth, not height. So now you can see we're warping it kind of in both directions. Uh, and let's make that warp even faster now. There we go, that's fun. Okay, well everything's red and it's kind of hard to tell what's going on. So now let's get into varying. So varying varies the value from the vertex down to the fragment shader. So that way we can kind of talk between the two shaders. So I'm gonna add a varying called the V position, which is the varying position. And that is gonna be a VEC3. So we'll do V position is equal to position two. And if I refresh, I haven't broken anything, which is good, but I'm still not doing anything. So I've defined it in the vertex so I can move the verte vertices around. Let's do that now in the fragment. So the fragment's there. Um, and let's just take the V position, and you can see my color here, before I dive into changing it, is red, green, blue, alpha. So if I change my green value, which is the third to one, it's range between zero and one, and I save it. Refresh, now it's yellow. Um, if I wanna make it white, I set everything to one. So kind of typical color manipulation. And Let's go ahead and set the V position and then the Y height to red. It's a little dark, so let's multiply by 
let's say three, some arbitrary value. Let's do five. There, now we can kind of see how the height is changing the color of what we have there. Uh, so let's change it to two. That's kind of fun. Um, let's go ahead and do these other values, the V position, and set the X and the uh, Z value. So that way our kind of horizontal coordinates. Okay, that's fun. So now you can see how we're, as, as, the, um, as the values go across the plane, they, uh, they change colors that way. Uh, so that's some basic vertex manipulation where I programmatically create a plane with just a simple function. Um, in fact, let's go back to some of the first part of it. So this is nice and smooth and continuous, but if I set this to have, um, instead of 100 segments, just 10, you can see like my original vertex data, which is a lot more obvious. So let's do that down to five. So that's much more, you can see, you can see the individual um, vertices and polygons as they go through. Um, then back up to 100. There we go. So yeah, now it's smooth again. Um, and so if you want to do things programmatically with shaders, which not every library makes as easy, but it's still usually accessible, um, you can create some very interesting effects and generate your own geometry and do some things that will not just be making a box fly across the screen. You can get even more complicated. Some of it does take some math, um, so if you haven't studied up as much math, it's nice to pick up a math programming book. Um, but other than that, like you can really dive into some crazy ways that you can generate some code and, and do fun things on the screen. And a plane is a really easy way to get started because it's pretty easy to, to understand. Um, whenever you're working with it. So it's a good place to start if you're just looking at getting started with shaders. And sometimes even getting it into 2D shaders before you get into 3D is even nicer too. But the you know the key thing to keep in mind is you have attributes, uniforms, and varyings, and they all operate with the shaders. So that's the gist of this video. Thanks for watching.